I'm John Johnston and we're at Blair Mullock Farm at Sorn here. We farm um, 400 acres uh, with about just over 600 mature ewes to the top, 180 hogs also topped and um, there's 80 breeding cows, um, limousine cross dairy cows and we buy in about 60 um, dairy bred calves to rear um, in total for stock. So we're standing next to the EID auto drafter. Um, we just got it last year and to try and be better at tracking weight gains and using EID to its full potential for the to improve, improve the flock. Previously our worming programme was um, simply um, just blanket dozing um, each lot whenever um, you know your daily routine looking of stock made you think that this lot's ready for doing. Um, whereas now we're looking at the targeted, targeted selective treatment um, based on the um, weight gain. I, I think this machine will definitely be a big improvement on um, worm control um, because resistance is a big worry for me um, because obviously the, you know, there's only a set amount of drugs that we can use and if we become resistant to them nobody knows what the future is and um, so I would hope to be more selective with the treatment to hopefully prolong the, the, the drugs that are available um, just now. Now we have the ability to doze um, based on that reduced weight gain as opposed to wait until we see the dirty tails or the, the obvious poor performance in lambs where um, there'll be a, a, a drastic loss compared to the, the minimal losses. And hopefully it will allow us to be selling you know, bigger lambs um, and quicker with, uh, with a lot less input. So resistance in worm is the, worms is the genetic ability for a worm to survive a dose of wormer that would usually be effective. This genetic ability is passed on to that worm's offspring. So if you have two susceptible worms, they will only produce susceptible offspring onto the pasture um, to then be picked up by the sheep coming along. If you have two resistant worms, they will only produce resistant larvae against which wormers will not be effective. And if you have a mixture of susceptible and resistant worms, they will produce a mixture of susceptible and resistant larvae against which some will be responsive to wormers and some will not be. So you can see it's really important to keep that sensitive population um, within the worm population, both in the sheep and in the field, in the pasture. And this is called your in refusia population. So the in refusia population, effectively, the sensitive worms dilute out the resistant worms. If you only have resistant worms in the pasture, then you're going to be worming sheep that are being affected by the worms. So they're going to be losing condition used milk yields are going to be reduced and your worm is not going to be effective against them. So you need to keep some sensitive worms in the pasture so that the worms being reproduced onto the pasture are not all resistant. And this is the concept behind moving away from doze and move sort of concept. So in, in recent years we've been mo moving more towards a, a move and then delay and then doze or a doze delay and then move concept and that's to make sure that there are some sensitive worms on every pasture that you're, you're grazing. So another way that you can do this is to use what we call targeted selective treatments, so TSTs in sheep. And that is where you don't doze every single sheep when you've got them going through the race. So you leave some sheep untreated, they will have worms in them but those worms will be sensitive and then they'll go onto the pasture to dilute out the resistant worms. But how do you know what uh, sheep to choose not to treat. So you need to look at things like body condition score, but you can't just use one single body condition score, you need to look at a change in body condition. Also daily life weight gain is a really good one, but again you can't just look at one weight, you need to look at the change in weight and those lambs that are reaching your targets, don't worm them, they don't need to be wormed. You can also use faecal worm egg counts, this isn't overly practical from an individual point of view, but from a group basis, it's a really good indicator of whether a group actually needs worms or not. Good morning, I'm Graham Lofthouse and we're at Bankhouse Farm. We are running a rotational grazing system here at Bankhouse and we are farming 110 hectares owned and we have 30 hectares that we rent in. We have a flock of 600 Easy Care ewes and ewe lambs that are uh, mated every year and we have 85 suckler cows and we take them through uh, to store. Uh, forward stores. I've been doing target selective treatment for four years now. It's been a sort of steady progression. First year was quite a learning curve of how to catch that data and, and uh, get the most from it. And also learning that it's not just about the weight recording, it's also about how the sheep look and have they got any other challenges on them at that point in time. The big thing for target selective treatment for us on the farm is that we're looking to reduce our anthelmintic usage obviously, but mainly to 
protect the efficacy of the wormer groups that we're using on farm. And I think that's a big factor for ourselves and many other farms is to protect the efficacy of the wormers you're using. So targets uh, for the TST treatment every year is that well, all our lambs are initially are, are uh, not for everyone it would be, but we, we record all our lambs and use linked at birth. So they have an EID in them at birth. And um, that could be put in at any point in time, uh, no matter what system you're under. So EID is essential for TST. So our first weigh-in would be about seven to eight weeks old. And prior to that, we would have done a FEC test at that point in time, because it's pre our first weigh-in. There's, there's, there's no weight gain to work with TST at that point in time. And also, if you're looking for nematodirus, that's the time to be looking at it. Uh, but you have to use your eyes as well with nematodirus, because the time you've picked up it on, a uh, faecal egg count, it might be too late. So once we've got our first weight recording, um, second weight recording, we've obviously got a daily live weight gain between those two parameters. Uh, and I would set targets for our flock, and that's an hour flock of 200 grams a day would be the cutoff point. So if you're below 200 grams a day, we'd be looking at treating. Uh, that's pre-weaning and post-weaning, we'd be looking at 150 grams a day and below we'd be treating. Um, and it's as simple as that, but we have to take in all account all the other factors and, you know, lameness can be a contributing factor to daily live weight gain being reduced. Uh, coccidiosis could be, uh, pasturella is a big one. I mean, we've had pasturella in the past and even this year for some of the lambs that are behind, we had a pasturella and that reduced daily live weight gain. So you can't just use TST and it's on its own. It has to be part of a package. The other part of the package really is like, so I would always use faecal egg count as part of that. Um, so we would, we would look at the sheep, we would identify those sheep that are not growing well by the TST, but we would possibly also have done a faecal egg count prior to that. Or if we thought there was a lot of lambs that weren't growing well, we might not treat them that day, but we'd do a faecal egg count, we can get that back within 24 hours from a vet practice, and then we could go back in and treat those that need treat. I think the important thing with TST is don't weigh them too close together. If you, if you weigh every week, you'll actually find there's greater diversity in the weight gains and it, it's actually thrown out by gut fill can be a big factor in that and we tend to bring our lambs in and weigh straight away as soon as they come in the door. Some people will leave them for an hour or two and do them, I tend to bring them straight in and weigh them then. Um, otherwise I think you get quite big diversity of, of weight gains. Yeah, the big benefits with TST are reduced anthelmintic usage. I mean, I think that's, that's the, the, the one sort of gold standard thing you're looking for is to reduce your anthelmintic usage. And we've reduced that by at least a third. And every year will be different. So this year, we're near a half reduction in our normal anthelmintic usage. But for an average year, I'd say at least a third reduction. And you'll have some lambs in there which will never need treated the entire year. And for us as a breeding flock selling on breeding stock, that's a really interesting piece of data to have. Because if you've got lambs that don't need wormed at all, you maybe want to select them out. So TST's got lots of things about it that are positives as far as I'm concerned. Top three tips for me was, well, it seems really simple, but you've got to have EIDs in your lambs and you've got a good data recording equipment. So a good way ahead and uh, able to analyze that immediately at the pen side, basically, what, what the daily live weight gain is. The second thing is, Seems really simple too, but you need to set parameters that are the growth rates you want to have acceptable for your farm. I'm using 200 and 150 for pre and post weaning, and that might vary depending on the farm, and it might vary also depending on the forage quality and the breed of sheep you're working with as well. And I think over time you learn that yourself. And the third thing for me, which I think is really important, is that TST is only part of a tool package. It's, it's, not, it's not a silver bullet you've got to use your eyes and testing as part of that whole package to get the most from TST.